Ah, Japan, the land of the rising sun, neon lights, delicious food, and a deeply rich and respectable culture. I was recently fortunate enough to spend two weeks exploring the whimsical and magical metropolis that is Tokyo. But being the dumb and uncultured American that I am, many aspects of Tokyo took me by surprise. And a lot of things here were shockingly foreign to what I was used to back in the United States. So today I'll be presenting my list of the 13 weirdest things about Tokyo. Number 1. Vending Machines In Tokyo, there are vending machines everywhere. Not just where you would expect to find them, like in front of businesses or at the transit stations. Over here, there are random vending machines all over the place. In the location that I was staying, it was a more rural area on the outskirts of Tokyo. And still, there were vending machines everywhere. I mean, look at this street. Just a small back street full of farms and homes. And then, random vending machine right on the corner of this abandoned lot. Alright, whatever. Just walking a few blocks, you'll come across several of them, which I have to admit is very convenient because you never have to go far to get a refreshing drink. Good work, Japan. Number 2. No Public Trash Cans for such a heavily populated major city, Tokyo is surprisingly clean. You will rarely see litter discarded on the sidewalks like you might expect in other big cities. But what's weird about this is that there are no public trash cans anywhere. It's kind of disturbing because when you're walking down the sidewalk, you would expect to see trash cans every block or so for passerbys to dispose of their rubbish. But no, you see none. Meaning if you're gonna go out into the city, you have to be sure to carry around a separate bag to collect all your trash throughout the day and until you can finally find one of these rare trash cans to throw stuff away in. Now, if you're lucky, you may find recycling receptacles near some of the vending machines for your plastic bottles. But if you're looking to throw away any other types of waste, you gotta go out of your way to find a convenience store and hope that they have a trash can bin open to the public. Oh, well, look at that. Someone even discarded a premature fetus on the ground. Naughty, naughty. Number three, teeny cars. Tokyo consists of many narrow streets and side alleys, so I guess in order to get around this with ease, they had to make teeny little cars. The roads are filled with these dwarf-sized cars zipping around like real-life capsule corp vehicles. And it's a very different scene than in America, where we have big-ass double-wide trucks with extended cabs taking up four fucking parking spots. Hell yeah! Number 4. Driving on the wrong side of the road. In Japan, everyone insists on driving on the wrong side of the road. I've heard the stereotype of bad Asian drivers, but I didn't think it was this bad. Obviously, drivers are supposed to drive on the right side of the road. However, in Japan, they all drive on the wrong side, the left side of the road. It seems incredibly dangerous, but I guess since everyone is doing it, this ass-backwards system tends to work out. Speaking of dangerous traffic, what the fuck are these signs trying to indicate? Number 5. Paper Towels Traditionally, Japanese restaurants offer patrons ashibori, which are small wet towels used to clean your hands before and after meals. And while most of the restaurants I visited in Tokyo have paper napkins, they were absolutely shit. All of the napkins were the same brand of a very thin and uncomfortably plastic-like material. You can even see the glossy sheen off these crapkin napkins. And their coarse texture lacks any softness, making it feel more like you're wiping your mouth with a piece of computer paper. I also found that the same thin and poor quality material is apparently used to make all the toilet paper as well. Meaning you better be careful wiping your ass, or your finger could easily rip through the single ply and end up in a stinky mess. Number 6. Squatty Potties Well, I guess shitty toilet paper is just the plight of foreigners like me, because a lot of the public toilets here use bidets to clean your bum. But when I went into the bathroom stall at the transit station, I was surprised to see this. Squatty Potties are apparently very popular over here. Normally, I would try to avoid the floor of a public restroom like it's made of lava. But these Squatty Potties make sure you get nice and intimate with it, as you hover over these stink holes and hope your ass has good aim. I know personally that shitting in public restrooms is usually a last resort for when your bowels are about to explode, so I can only imagine the kind of shotgun spray that gets rocketed out of these floor toilets, and most likely, also the hand support bars. So I had to take a pass on trying this one. I guess that's just a gaijin in me. Number 7. This Monkey
<laughs> what is this monkey business? Number eight, liquor everywhere. In the United States, there are very strict laws regarding the sale and distribution of alcohol. For instance, you have to be over 21 years old, and liquor is oftentimes not sold past certain hours, or in some dry counties, alcohol isn't even sold at all. But in Japan, they don't seem to give a flying fuck who buys liquor. You can walk right into any convenience store and see bottles of liquor right next to the dried fish snacks on the shelves. I bought some liquor from a 7-Eleven, and they didn't even ID me. They didn't give a shit. And this was a big culture shock to me when I visited one of the major shopping malls and found a liquor store right inside. Liquor stores in the mall. Fuck yes. Hell, I bought two bottles for cheap. No questions asked. I don't know how everyone in this city isn't just wasted all of the time seeing how convenient it is to get liquor. Funny enough though, if you want to buy cigarettes, you have to be over 20 years old. But not alcohol. So have fun getting drunk, kids. Just remember not to smoke. Number 9. Convenience Store Snacks if you go to a 7-Eleven in America, you might find some weird foods on the shelves, like red hard-boiled eggs or a bagged pickle. And I'll admit, that's weird. Well, the convenience store snacks in Japan are probably just as odd. No, they're definitely much, much more strange. Squid jerky, fried octopus tentacles, and let's not forget, these fish things. Hey, to each culture their own taste, I suppose. And like they say, when in Japan, eat like the Japanese. Oh, that was mushy. <laughs> Number 10. Foreigners. Japan is full of foreigners. Wherever I looked, it seems like everyone I saw was foreign. And this was a big culture shock for me. I felt like I was the only American in the whole country. Number 11. Bus Passes. Japan is the city of the future, and their system of riding the public buses and trains was all new to me. Now maybe this exists in America and I'm unaware of it, but in Tokyo, for a bus pass, you use these badass metal cards that you put money on, and then just quickly tap it on a card reader when you get on the bus or enter the metro station. Once you leave the bus or metro, you tap it once more on the reader and the transport fare is automatically deducted from your account. Just a quick tap tap and you're on your way. No fuss, no muss. It's a very fluent system that I would love to see used for all public transportation. Hey what? Oh come on, that's kind of offensive. Number 12. Train Sex Noises Speaking of transit, the next weird thing about Tokyo had me laughing every time I was on the train. When I first rode the subway in Japan, I kept hearing a weird noise that sounded an awful lot like someone was watching porn on their phone with the volume turned up a little too loud. It was a strangely perverse moaning sound that would happen every time the train would come to a stop or take off. Don't believe me? Here, just take a listen. And you tell me if you hear it too, or if I just have a perverted mind. You hear that? Tell me that doesn't sound like cries of sexual ecstasy. Anyways, it turns out that this was the sound of the train shocks or brakes squealing whenever it started to slow down or speed up. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who hears it. And finally, number 13, Super Tokyo Man. Super Tokyo Man. Without a doubt, the craziest thing I found about Japan was that they have their own version of Batman, who roams the city streets, fighting evil and protecting their proud and rich culture. So this last spot has to go to Super Tokyo Man. On any given day, you might see this masked vigilante patrolling the streets of Tokyo, scoping out the crowds for potential criminals, or even reviving dead bodies in the outlaying suicide forest. And while no one seems to know the true identity or origin of the mysterious hero, there is no doubt that the people of Japan feel a sense of safety, knowing that Super Tokyo Man is never far away, ready to protect the city and fighting to maintain the culture of the respectful Japanese nation. So a big thank you to the Super Tokyo Man. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and other social media by following the links in the description below. Also, Super Tokyo Man shirts, as well as many other designs, are now available in my merch store. And if you enjoy my content and want to support this channel, please consider donating to my Patreon. Every contribution is much appreciated and helps to keep this channel alive. Thank you everyone for watching, and stay tuned.